everybody. Uh, let's talk about some SpaceX news here. The FAA and SpaceX are working very hard together to make sure that the next flight of Starship happens without a hitch. Now, Starship uh, IFT-3, the integrated flight test that just happened a little while ago, was pretty much a success, right? So now they're moving forward with the IFT-4 launch, and hopefully everything goes well with that launch. Now, the FAA has to work with SpaceX in order to give them a flight license. They have to make sure that everything's safe for SpaceX, the rocket, the workers, and also people in the way of the rocket's flight. That's important. They don't want to hurt anybody, any property, or anything going forward with these flights. Now, this is important because SpaceX launches the Starship over the Gulf of Mexico. And apparently, uh, according to the IFT-3 flight path, it was going to land in the Indian Ocean. The Starship was. The booster is going to land in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. So the Starship might land in the Indian Ocean again. We're not 100% sure what's going on with this. We, we are guessing, everyone's guesstimating that it will happen similarly, but there is some FAA hinting at what may happen for this next one. So before anything happens, FAA and SpaceX will be working together to uh, make sure to safe the whole operation. Um, they have to make sure that uh, SpaceX uses the time between this flight, the last flight, IFT-3 and IFT-4, to safe the area and make sure that they put anything in place that uh, they found was wrong in the last flight. So anything in the booster or anything in the ship, they have to fix it. They have to change it in order to make it a safer flight for the future. Now, there's a possible flight in May, but it's not guaranteed right now. Uh, the FAA needs to modify the launch license due to changes, potential changes in the flight profile. We don't know exactly where this is going to land, but it might land similarly close to where it was going to land in the Indian Ocean, depending on the mission. Now, uh, the FAA will prioritize the public safety over anything else. And public safety is paramount for one thing mainly, uh, but mostly uh, there, there's two things, I guess. One mainly is the booster in the Gulf of Mexico, because that's going to try to do a soft landing on a virtual tower, according to Elon, on Flight 4. And I made a video about Flight 4 and Flight 5 of Starship. So Flight 4, they want to do a virtual tower in the Gulf of Mexico. This means that they're going to do uh, the normal flight, like normal, like IFT-3, fly the ship to the Indian Ocean, get the booster, hot stage separation, all of that stuff. But after the hot stage separation, they're going to send the booster into the Gulf of Mexico, land it vertically in the Gulf, similar to what they would do with a launch tower. Land it sort of, they're going to make a virtual tower. Maybe they're going to use some sort of AR, VR setup so they know exactly what's going to happen. I don't know what they're going to do at that point. But hopefully they have a really good understanding of the landing mechanics of the booster because they haven't even gotten it close to landing now. IFT-1, IFT-2, IFT-3, we haven't even seen the booster get close to landing in the Gulf of Mexico. So IFT-4, if they can nail this, Elon has said in his latest talk that he wants to land the booster at Starbase. And I don't know if this is a great idea. I'm, I don't know. I'm so scared of this. I don't want them to move back six months because they landed a booster and it wasn't prepared to land yet. I'm just, I'm terrified that they could blow something up or something could happen. They have a rud as Starbase and they could set themselves back six months. Now I know this is a thing that they have thought about. They're rocket scientists after all. They're engineers. They're scientists. They do this for a living. They make a bunch of money doing this. And I'm not that guy. I am a coder. I know how difficult um, code is, but landing a rocket, not a hundred percent an expert at that. And that's why I default to the engineers and the scientists at SpaceX. And I trust them that they'll do the right thing, but I'm also scared that they're going to set themselves back. I just don't want them to do that. But the landing attempt in the Gulf of Mexico, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I think it's scary. That's all I'm going to say. It's going to be a wild ride. It's going to be excitement guaranteed as Elon says, um, 
But we do have some information from an FAA spokesperson. Jim Coleman said that I think we could possibly get there, which means a launch in May. I'm not going to say we will get there absolutely, but I won't say it's out of the question either on the possibility of a May launch. He said that the other day, three days ago. Um, he also said they're going to do some different things with this particular missions, referring to changes in the flight profile. So IFT3, they did normal flight profile, booster back to the Gulf of Mexico, and it did a rud. Um, it, did a, uh, it exploded over the Gulf of Mexico, which is fine. They expected something like that. Um, and they did hot stage firing was great. They did the, uh, Starlink door. They opened up the Starlink door, which was fantastic. And they did some, um, communications with the ground. We've heard about, um, they did some, uh, live video feeds, which we didn't expect them to do, but it was fantastic as well. And then they tried to land the starship in the Indian ocean. Now IFT four, they're going to, as Elon said as well, they're going to try to get the starship to the height, basically a melting point of the starship as it re-enters the atmosphere into the Indian Ocean. And then it's going to, they're, I think they're going to explode it in the, Indian, in the Indian Ocean. So we're expecting that, right? Um, now there's other things, the virtual tower landing, not exactly sure what that is, but Elon has said it. Um, they might do a public safety review. The FAA might do a public safety review with a uh, full mishap investigation or from the full mishap investigation that SpaceX does um, just to speed up the process. And I think that's what's going to happen from here on out. Elon and SpaceX and company will do a full mishap investigation from the previous launch. And then the FAA will look at it um, and do a public safety review, depending on that mishap information and investigation information that they send over. Um, you know, they're both willing and able to do this fast. Uh, FAA uh, say they are willing to go fast by May. They want to. And the separation of the public safety review hints at a potential difference between public safety flaws and broader mishap investigation details. Now, SpaceX is going to have to do some things, though, before they launch this rocket. Pre-launch checks. FAA likely conducts, uh, conducts a thorough review of the launch vehicle and launch procedures to ensure that they meet safety standards as normal. They should do this. It can involve inspections, simulations, and analyses of new potential risks for IFT4 and IFT5 going forward. The flight path, if it's changed the trajectory, FAA might assess the flight path and trajectory to ensure a minimal risk to populated areas um, and also debris. Uh, what could happen? You know, debris and blast radius. Uh, so if they run somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, what's that blast radius look like? What's the debris going to look like? And where's the good debris going to end up? And since the ocean is so huge, the debris from kind of a, I mean, it's a big rocket to us, but to the ocean, it's nothing. So uh, I don't think Elon and company and the FAA are going to worry about one rocket booster or one rocket in the Gulf of Mexico or the Indian Ocean. Uh, now, another thing that the FAA works on is the launch abort system, um, the RUD system, basically, the FTS, basically like this thing blows up a rocket if something goes wrong. And Elon and company have shown that it works after the IFT-1 mishap where it didn't work and the thing spun out of control. Now they know what they're doing. IFT-2, IFT-3, both worked great. So uh, the, they're working forward uh, they're working with SpaceX on this. The FAA and SpaceX are working on this. Um, critical safety flaws, Elon and company are working on those. The FAA might want to confirm there aren't any critical safety flaws for the next rocket. Um, flight profile, like I said before, overall public safety is a paramount for the FAA and SpaceX as well. If anything happens public safety wise, Elon and company are going to be pushed back possibly for months, maybe a year or two, depending on the severity of the public safety incident. Now, IFT-5, this is going to be a wild ride. If they do that booster landing in the Gulf of Mexico, what's going to happen? I want to know your comments down below. I want to see what you say, because I want to know uh, how, the, how the public feels about this. I want them to go as fast as possible. And of course, iterative design is the best way to do rocket design. Apparently, because we know that Elon and SpaceX 
they're killing it right now. They're doing great work. So there's no reason why they should not continue doing this in the future. Now, let me know in the comments down below. Please also hit the like button because it really helps out the channel. And also, if you could subscribe to this show, to this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. I, and I'm going to tell you why, because um, you like this. You, apparently, you like this because you went this far. So if you subscribe to this channel, not only will you get my content and other content from me in the future, but you'll get other spaceflight creators out there that do similar things like SpaceX, NASA, spaceflight, and you'll get them in your feed, which is great, which is great because then you get new creators in the future, which you didn't know about, which is one of the most wonderful things about YouTube is that you can find people that you don't even know that they exist and that they have great content. So if you're new here, thank you for making me that person <laughs> and watching this whole thing. And if you've been here for a while, thank you so much for being part of this. I really do appreciate you. And if you're a fan of the show, become a member, join the pod squad, do it up, become a member and help me continue making these videos every single week because I love doing this and I love sharing information that I have about SpaceX and Starship with you as soon as I get it. So thanks again, everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in the next one.